welcome to another exciting episode of Cyber Streets at Sankofa Inner City Culture League. We are still virtual because of the pandemic, but I thank you all for joining me today. As you can see, what I have here is a simple motor. And today we're going to learn how to build one. If you recall from our last episode together, we actually learned how to put together a power supply. We did that with lemons. Well, today we're going to take that to the next level and we built a motor. I will show you the steps in which you need to take in order to build your own motor. We will be provide for those who wish, we will be providing the necessary supplies so you too can do this particular experiment. So I'm going to disconnect the battery first. So there's no harm of being electrocuted. Not that you would with a uh, D cell battery. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a D cell battery. That's the big, big one. And you're going to need a rubber band to hold the wires onto the connections. And again, we'll be providing these things to you. You're going to need two wires to connect um, to the uh, paper clip to provide the electricity for the motor. You're going to need, uh, this is called a uh, magnetic wire. And I'll show you in a minute how to coil it uh, because when you get it, it'll just be straight, all of it. Um, you will need a magnet, two paper clips, one for each wire. I've unbent them. I won't bend them back to show you, but this was two paper clips. And you're gonna need a piece of styrofoam. Again, all of these things will be provided to you. When I first got this wire, and when you first get this wire, it'll simply be straight. I'm going to uncoil it so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Give me a moment. I wish I had more so I can show you without uncoiling this one, but I don't. So I'll have to work with this. Okay. Oh, and one other thing you'll need, I'll show you in one moment, is so that I could get this coil. I'll show you what I used to get that. And again, we'll provide that as well. Give me one moment. Okay. So, as I said, when I got this wire, it was just one straight piece of wire, like, So, okay, this is one piece of wire. In order to get it to the coil that you saw, I use what's called a dowel. And that's just a small piece of any rounded thing. In this case, this one's made of wood. And I simply wrap the wire around it as tightly as I could, leaving a little space and then moving it to the side as I went along because I want it to be like springs. So it simply wraps about 10 to 20 times. I just wrapped it and wrapped it some more and then moved it down. And now you can see it's already starting that, that springy I'm talking about. So I kept wrapping, pulling it tightly while I was wrapping and moving it down at the same time. And then I left some of it towards the end because I was going to need to be able to wrap around itself. And I was going to need um, ends that were going to fit through my paper clip. So I left about that much. So you want to hold all of this together, removing whatever you use to make the coil. And now you can see it still now all has that springy um, action. You're going to push all of that together. And you're gonna take one end of it and use it to hold it all together. So you just push it through. Okay, keeping it all as, as tight together as you possibly can and just wrap it a few times. You want to kind of keep it in a certain uh, one single circle as best you can, because the more centered it is, the easier it is for it to rotate 
which is what we're going to need to happen uh, when we make our modem. So that side, one more time, should be good. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other end. I'm going to go the other way. Pulling it tightly as I'm doing it. Try to stay towards the center because again, it's going to, we're going to use these, what we call leads to actually um, brace the uh, wire on for the spinning purposes. So you want to keep it again tight and as close to the middle as you possibly can. All right. When you're done, it'll look something like this. Okay. You're going to take your paper clips. Oh, sorry. These were ordinary paper clips when I started. You would just unbend one side and straighten it out. Okay? Do that two times. You're going to take the, the wire that we will provide you, and you're going to wrap one around each of the legs of the um, paper, uh, paper clips here. That's one. And do the same thing with the other. Okay. Now, you're going to use your styrofoam to place your uh, paper clips. Try to make sure that they are um, level so that when you put your um, the, the wire between them that it is centered and level. Okay? There is that and that. You're going to place your magnet equally between them, not touching either neither the wire nor the paper clips. Okay, you can go ahead. Oh, one of the things we have to do with our wire, we have to, and that's another thing that you will get, you will get um, sandpaper. I have this little piece. And what you're going to do is only, I repeat, only remove the enamel off the top of it. Do not remove it off both sides, just the top. So you just place it down whichever side you choose. And again, I've used this before, so I'm going to use the same area. I'm simply going to use the sandpaper just to, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm simply using the paper and sliding it off the enamel off the top of it. Okay, once you have all of the enamel off the top, you do the same thing with the other side. Okay, and you want to do the whole length of the wire, whatever's standing out that you have. Making sure that it's centered. You want to place it between your two paper clips. And again, do not want any part of it to touch the magnet itself, which we seem to be good as. Yep, perfect. So the only thing left to do, this band, actually, this is a rubber band. I had to place it 
over the battery, you'll need to do the same. Simply catch it on one end, and bring it up to the other end, kind of center it. And you're going to use it to hold the two wires that you're going to connect to. You're going to connect the red lead to the positive end of the battery. That's the one that has a little, we call it a little bump on the top. You're going to place that one there. Actually, you're going to place the black lead first. You always, always uh, connect the black lead first. And that's the one without the, the little bump on the end. That's the one that has the indentation. So we're simply going to slide that in. Making sure that it's touching. And mine is. Okay, that's on one end of the battery. And again, the red lead is going to go to the positive end of the battery. Most of them will say plus, because you know it's the positive end. If it doesn't, then you know that it is the end with the bump sticking outward. So I'm going to connect it, I'm sorry, this way. Lift your battery, your band-aid, your rubber band up a little bit. Just put that right on the little bump area. And there you have it. Now, perfect world, unlike the one I'm experiencing right this minute, your motor will immediately start spinning. If it does not, what do you check? Well, you wanna make sure first and foremost that the magnet is not touching anything, including your coil. If it is, move your paper clips up a little bit so that it's not touching the coil. Make sure it's also not touching the paper clips at all. Not to annoy, it should be touching the wire. If any of this is true, just do what you need to do to move it out of the way. You wanna make sure that this lead, this wire here is straight. So you also wanna make sure that your paper clips are at the same height on both sides. And if it still does not start, what I have found is just giving it a little kickstart has been helpful in getting my okay. I have found it just giving a little a little start has, has taken me where I needed to be, but it's taken me a few tries to get there. So if yours does not start immediately, don't give up, don't quit. Um, to be honest with you, to get my, the one you just saw running when I first started, it took me about half an hour to get everything that I needed to have in place, in place. Make sure that you have a battery that works. I know my new, this is a brand new one. Um, make sure that you have all metal to metal. Make sure the leads on the wires on the battery sides are all connecting on the ends of the battery itself. Make sure that on the paper clip side is definitely wrapped well around the uh, paper clips and there's no spaces. You again want to make sure that you have properly removed the enamel from the magnetic wire. And on, like I said, only from one side and make sure it's the same side on both sides of the lead, you wanna make sure that nothing touches the magnet. And once you've done all of that, you just give it a little, a little kickstart. And if you're fortunate, it starts. If not, you will continue, <coughs> excuse me, to look through and figure out what, the, I'm, I'm all centered with my, my magnetic wire. So I'm never gonna spin my lap. And I'm going to wrap more, because I don't need all that out of that and keep experimenting until you get it to spin. As you can see, I was not shaking the table when we began. Um, it was working, like I said, it took me a while to get there, but it was working as you saw. So this does work. Uh, and as I say, just be patient and persistent and keep trying until you get it to work, because it does, and it's fun to watch. And besides, it is um, the next step in where we're trying to get to. If we're trying to get to motorized 
um, low parts, then there's some things we need to understand before we get there. So don't give up. Also, make sure your wires are not in the way either. Let's see if we gain a little. Okay. Don't touch. Don't touch. And if you have a vote meter or multimeter, as we've used in the past, you can indeed check and make sure that you are getting voltage. I will do that now. It's a uh, D cell battery, so set it to two um, volts DC. And you can simply touch the red lead to the red side. And the, and the black lead to the black side. You should be getting about one point. Uh, make sure the magnet is not touching. You should get about one point. It should, um, if it was a perfect battery, it's 1.5. I've been using this one for a little while. So it's a little bit less than that at this point. But you get the general idea. So mine is measuring a lot less than it's supposed to. So I am measuring one by 1.3. Again, I've been using it for a little while. Actually 1.406. So I know that my connections are correct. It's just a matter of getting my coil correct so that and making sure that I have properly removed the enamel from the wire so that it indeed will spin. And it's just experimental at this point. You get the idea, you know it does work, you've seen it happen. I am Mr. Wins, join me next time. Take care.